A scaled down version of the One Paseo mixed use project will be built on a lot in Carmel Valley that sits between El Camino Real, Del Mar Heights Road and High Bluff Drive. Joining me with how the project will move forward are my guest Rachel Lang with the project developer Kilroy Realty and Ken Ferensky with What Price Main Street, a community group against the original plan for the development. And Rachel, how will this new development plan that was agreed to compared to the last version? Right, so our compromise with the community set forth parameters, and some of the parameters include no building height over seven stories, no, um, they want to cut the um, daily trips approximately in half, um, and um, remove one of the driveways that would have been added. So there would have been two driveways, they're cutting it down to one. From there, we're going to back into those parameters and redesign the project, but we're going to do it with significant community input. And um, Ken, what would you like to see in this plan? Obviously, this, this plan was agreed to with the community. Would you like to see other changes, or do you like it? Well, I, I think we're in a great start. I think, you know, we have reduced traffic, we have reduced heights, and we have it coming back to the planning board for community input. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great start and I think we need to, to work together to try to create something that works for both of us and, uh, and you know, reduces the impacts on the community and allows them to develop the project they need. Well, we're seeing this earlier concept of one Paseo and Rachel, how will the final development plan address concerns of traffic and the number of high density homes with which were of great concern to the community? Well, so there's a formula for what creates a certain amount of traffic, right? So we'll, we'll basically have the mix of uses um, add up to that number. But what we'll also do is it'll still have a balanced mix of uses. So there will still be homes, there will still be retail, and there will still be office. It'll still be an active environment. It'll be different than the original project. It's not gonna be you know, the same Main Street project that it was, um, that the council approved, but it will be a, it'll be a great project and it'll be a highly amenitized um, office and living environment. So would you say different in that it's smaller? It nutshell. will be smaller, there's no question on that. Um, and it will, uh, I'm not sure, we don't know what the mix of uses will be. There will be community input before the uh, final project or a project redesign is, is brought to the public. Um, but it will, it'll be smaller, but it'll be mixed use. So Ken, as so much of the new plan is still gonna be developed as you both have mentioned. Mm -hmm. How do you know that the community and uh, groups like yours will support the new plan? We don't know yet, but the you know the the idea is to work with the community planning board to create a project we can support. And there were you know there were were some issues. There were heights along the street. There were the number of intersections along Delmar Heights Road. There were the taking of mature trees, em emergency response time, a number of things like that. And we need to work together. You know the the community is has worn out after six or seven years, and I think Kilroy is worn out after six and seven years. So we all want to create a project that works for both of us. Well, let's go with that. It's been about six years, I think, really, and, and uh, over this as far as this debate. Will this compromise plan keep the project from further their litigation or off the ballot? And let's start with you, Rachel. Well, the idea is that it would, yes, um, that we will have community involvement and agreement. Um, we had in com community involvement last time, and we had plenty of supporters. However, um, this time we're going to make sure that everybody who, who formally opposed it agrees on what the you know the ideas um, in it and, and and participates in it this time um, hopefully though there will be more participation at the front end oh, sure. by some of the folks who oppose it so who let, it last yeah time. let me ask the same question yeah. to Ken do you think this will uh, as you're moving forward this will stop any litigation and keep it off the ballot well I see a, a spirit of cooperation that I haven't seen before and I I think that's great um, but and I and I think the the City Council is primed to require sort of community support. So with that, I think we can work something that the community supports and we push to city council and we don't need to go through all the litigation. All right, and Rachel, uh, when do you expect to break ground if approved this plan? Uh, when, what are the next steps? What we hope is, you know, we'll, we'll redesign the project with community input over the next couple of months, um, bring it back through the community planning board, the planning commission and city council, um, we hope to have that go on a, a fast enough track that we can be in front of council by fall. Um, and then that would mean, you know, in the next 18 months, we could actually be breaking ground on a project. All right, we'll continue to follow this. Yes. Rachel Lang and Ken Ferensky, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.